Haven't you forgotten something? What? Your daily safety check. Each day before you ride away, it's very important to check the main features of your machine. Start by checking the fuel and oil. You don't want to run out in an awkward place. Now the brake levers. Do they both work smoothly? And does the adjustment feel right? The front tyre. A quick squeeze to see if it's fully inflated. Then spin it round and check for cuts, nails and stones in the tread. Make sure the valve cap is tightened up. Repeat the inspection at the back wheel. Are the tyres properly inflated? Any cuts or damage? Is this valve cap tight? Whilst you're at the back, have a look at the chain tension adjustment. If it's correct, you should be able to move the chain about half an inch up and down. Make sure the steering is free and will turn easily from lock to lock without any tight places. Now start the engine. Petrol on, stoke, front brake applied and weight forward on the handlebars, a swinging kick and drop the decompressor. Regulate the engine speed with the throttle. Now check the lights. Headlamp on high beam and on disc. Tail light OK? Horn? Next, brake the rear wheel and roll the machine forward off the stand. Ease it forward and make sure that both the front and rear brakes are working efficiently. Now the machine is ready to ride away. Oh, well, I suppose he had to forget something. Well, those checks didn't take long, but once a week the machine should be given a more thorough inspection. Start at the front. Checking the tyre for cuts and damage. Use a pressure gauge to ensure correct inflation to the maker's recommended tyre pressure. And replace the valve cap firmly. This not only keeps out the dirt, but helps to keep the valve airtight. Check the spokes to see if any are loose. These wheel and tyre checks should be repeated on the back wheel. Spin the wheel to make sure it's running true. Using a spanner, check that the front wheel nuts are tight. You don't want your wheel dropping out. Let's move on to the brakes. With repeated use, the linings wear down and the cables stretch, allowing brake lever travel to increase. Where the clearance is too great, the adjusting screw is rotated until there is only a small amount of movement before the brakes start to operate. When the correct adjustment is reached, the locking nut is tightened up so that the adjuster cannot slip. Check the cables, where the inner cable emerges from the outer sheath, to see that there are no signs of frayed strands, which could cause the brakes to stick on, or even worse, not to operate. If there is any sign of fraying, have the cables replaced at once. Chain tension is checked by the amount of free movement. This is far too much. A chain as slack as this will wear quickly and could come off. To adjust the chain, Slacken off the rear wheel securing bolts on either side and screw in the chain tensioner nut to tighten up the slack in the chain. It's very important to adjust the tension nut the same number of turns or flaps on each side to keep the wheel running true. When the correct tension is achieved, the chain has approximately half an inch of up and down movement. 
now lock up the wheel nut firmly. To lubricate the cables, operate the levers and apply the oil can so that the oil works down inside the cable. On some machines, a special oiling point is fitted to the cable to make lubrication easier. Don't forget to operate the lever to distribute the oil along the cable. All cables should be lubricated at both ends. Any surplus oil helps to protect exposed parts of the cable against rust. Chains that are not kept well oiled will wear quickly. To lubricate, turn the chain and drip oil from the can over the links. And remember when you finish to wipe off the surplus. Where there is a transmission case, remove the filler plug and use a dipstick or screwdriver to check the correct oil level. If the oil level is low, top up with the correct grade of oil given in the maker's handbook. The handbook will also give the intervals after which the oil should be changed. When replacing the filler plug, make sure the fibre washer is in place and undamaged. Check the spark plug. The plug point should be free from oil and carbon and the gap between the points should not be too wide. If necessary, have the plug cleaned and reset the point gap according to the handbook. And don't forget to check the plug washer. Make sure the plug is tightened firmly back into the cylinder head and the ignition lead securely replaced. Check the steering head by lifting the front wheel clear of the ground, trying to move it backwards and forwards to see if there's any play. Similarly, the wheel bearing should be checked for side play. If there is any play in either the steering or the wheel bearings, this should be checked by an expert. Complete the inspection by going right round the machine, checking and correcting anything loose. Suspension unit bolt, saddle and carrier. The pedal nuts. The tank. Mudguard stays. Headlamp, horn. In fact, everything on the machine. With tools like these, you can carry out all the checks we've just seen and some minor repairs. So don't forget, wear the correct clothing, preferably including a pair of gloves for the journey itself. And every time before you ride away, carry out the daily safety checks. Have you enough fuel and oil? Now the brake levers. Check both tyres for pressure, cut and damage. See the chains not too slack. Start the engine on the sand. Check both front and rear lights. Does the horn work? Roll the machine off the sand and check that the brakes are operating correctly. As you have watched, this check has taken Tony only 59 seconds, less than a minute. Yet this check carried out daily could save hours, pounds, or even a life.